Hi, my name is Jenna DeAngelis. Welcome to my studio. I was in New York City last week and walking down Fifth Avenue just window shopping is an incredible experience. I walked by a very, very high-end tabletop store and saw some linen placemats. They had some beautiful texturized painting on them and I thought, oh, I'm going to go home and make some of my own. So I picked up at the store yesterday some very plain navy blue, dark blue linen placemats and I'm going to embellish these and turn them into something really spectacular. Welcome to my studio. Today is the perfect day to make a fantastic table. The supplies that you'll need for this project are a placemat, probably made of linen or cotton with a slightly tight weave, some paint brushes, some textile paints, cardstock for your printer, a glass of water to wash your brushes in, and a palette, or else you could use just a good old dinner plate. That's all you need. This project is going to be personal, handmade, and I love the idea that it's also very precise. So let me show you what I created on four separate pieces of paper, which you can download from my website. I put the four words, care, share, love, and laugh, in a nice, bold, very classic font that what I'd like to do is take an X-Acto knife, <laughs> cut out each one of these letters, and then with textile paints, use them as a stencil to create the word written over and over again in different colors so that you've got this sort of layered sense of the word care or the word share, laugh, love. So that every placemat is going to have a different personal feel but it's all going to come through with the same colors and the same tone. So let's get started. You're going to need an X-Acto blade and you're going to need to print out each one of these words and very carefully just Cut each letter out. Save all the little pieces when you're done. Use a ruler to cut these if you'd like. Makes it a little bit easier. Just go through your lines horizontally and vertically. It can make it easier. Use a lot of precision with your blade as you cut these letters out. And for instance, in the middle of the R, Save that little piece because you may want it for later, even if it's just to outline it. Now that I'm chatting here, let me tell you a little bit about New York. Okay, so here's what I saw. Oxfords, go figure. Oxfords, but not like the traditional ones that we grew up with, but women's Oxford shoes that have cutouts in them. So they're halfway between a sandal and a shoe and they are adorable. So in the next three or four months, when you find yourself buying Oxford shoes in the market, you're going to say, oh, I remember Jenna told me that this was the hot new trend. I'm watching out for you. I'm right there for you. You'll see. All right. One word down, three to go. These placemats are going to be gorgeous. Finish up your little stencils and then I'll show you how to use textile paint, not dye, to make a really terrific place setting. What we're going to do now is prep a palette or a dinner plate. Please feel free to go grab a dinner plate, any one that even that you use. And I'm going to show you how to prep a palette so that cleanup is easy and done in a snap. So all you do is you take your palette. Now I happen to have had this old one for about 20 years and it's still holding up. It's a good old tin palette. And what you do is you just take a few drops of water and wet it. Now do that on your dinner plate too. Just take your dinner plate and 
put a dash of water on it, and then go take a piece of cling wrap, whatever kind you use, and then what I want you to do is lay it across your palette. And what the water does is it makes the plastic stick to it. And then when you need to put the paint down, you put the paint right on the plastic. You paint all afternoon, do whatever you need to do, and then when it's time to clean up, whoop, lift off the plastic, and you're ready to throw it away. The next step in prepping for your placemat is to choose which paints you're going to use. Now let's talk a little bit about color choice. When you're using a dark background, you want to have one tone that's clearly a lot lighter. And then you have to pick two other colors that are similar in tone, but opposite to the color that you're using. Let's prepare your palette with the paints that we're going to use. And in this project, I want that matching blue, but I want to make it lighter. So I'm going to add white to it. And then just after that, my sort of bronze color and then the gold accent color. This is going to be stunning. So let's mix up our paints here and make a beautiful dusty blue. And then we'll take that on and we'll start using that as the first word for our placemat collage. Prepping all the pieces for the creative project is the hard part. And then you get to do the creative part where you just escape into the beauty of the colors, the composition, and the look. That's my favorite part. So what I'm going to do here is now that I've mixed the blue and the white together, my first layer is going to be to the bottom left of each placemat because we need to give it an anchor. And I want you to stay within the stitching and I want you to keep it very well framed. So I'm going to lay down the first of my templates in the bottom left hand corner of all four. That way we have one compositional element that is consistent throughout all four. After that we're going to be able to play with color and placement after that of each of the words on the horizontal and vertical axis. We're going to mix them all around. But I want that lower left hand corner to be where that one single word that matches all four is going to be. So what I'm going to do is take just my nice mixed up textile paint and I'm going to start painting inside this very nicely made stencil. The history of placemats is really interesting. In medieval times, there was no such thing as a placemat. People, okay, this is disgusting. People used to wipe their mouths off with the tablecloth. And it was not considered rude, it was considered normal. It wasn't until the medieval times that they began to put down napkins and placemats because they were able to mass produce fabric, but before it was a really big deal. So the linens were very valuable and hard to come by. And then around medieval times, when they were able to make more at a time, they began <laughs> to put out napkins and placemats so that all these thugs, even though they didn't think they were thugs, who were just wiping their mouth on the tablecloth, had to become sort of civilized and use a napkin. And that's when placemats and linens and manners, stuff like that, became very fashionable. But before that, it was just a bunch of heathens. I can just see like guys eating turkey legs and drinking that big old goblet and <laughs> wiping their disgust. Ugh. Not a visual that we want to remember. So now I've finished all four of the first words to create the background of the placemat. And again, as I said, they're all laid in essentially the same spot. And now the great reveal for the first layer. 
and it looks really cool. And there you have it, the last word in a beautiful placemat. We'll let the stencils dry out and the paint dry out just a little bit, and then we'll go on to the next layer. These are lovely. Now that the first layer has dried and I've pulled the stencils off, matching the same word that we've used before, my suggestion is to create a horizontal vertical frame for your placemat. So take the same word and put it, I don't know, just up the left side of the placemat. And of course, using a different color, we're going to create a framework for the left side of the placemat. And then we're going to layer and layer and layer till you have a terrific collage effect. Now, my next color choice, just personally, is going to be the rust color. And I may just add a touch of white in there to give it a little bit of texture. Because sometimes just one plain color gets a little heavy. And I had an art teacher who yelled at us once that said, if you ever put one single color on a canvas, I will fire you. So we always mixed a color, even if it was just the same bronze that we wanted, just by virtue of the fact that you're mixing it with another pigment to get the same color can give it sometimes a bit more dimension. So double checking that I've got the right word on the right placemat, I'm gonna go ahead and paint some of my last words on. This is turning out to be a really lovely project. I can't wait to feed my family and friends on such beautiful placemats. Gently pull off your next layer of stencils and we'll go on to our last color. Oh, fantastic. Mm. A beautiful place setting is a lovely way to set the stage for a delicious meal for the people that you love. I've had such a good time with you today, making stencils out of words that have meaning and cutting out little letters that I would love you to save for another project for another time. Now that the textile paint is dried on all of your placemats, what I want you to do is to turn them over and steam set them place by place with a linen setting on your iron and for about 10 or 20 seconds so that it bonds the textile paint to the fibers of the linen. Let them dry well and then use them regularly. You can wash them off gently, but they are ready to go. So this is a really lovely way to set the table for the people that you love and have a really fun evening. My name is Jenna DeAngelis. You're watching Artistic Living in Jenna's studio. Thanks for stopping by. What's your green wish? Find out more at greenwish.com.